In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to analyze Likert scale using frequencies, percentages, mean, and standard deviation in one table like this, and then interpret the results. So stay tuned till the end of the video. So here we need to go to analyze, and then we need to go to tables, and then custom tables. Click there. So I just need to reset this. And then I will need to uh, find the Likert scale items I want to analyze. And I can just uh, drag and drop them to this box by clicking uh, Alt and Shift and select it. So here we have the different Likert scale items. Although you see here the measure is uh, nominal, it's fine. It can be ordinal, nominal. So species deals with that automatically. We have Likert scale ranging from strongly disagree to strongly agree. So here we have uh, the different Likert scale items. So the position here is uh, columns. And then the category position needs to be adjusted to row labels in columns like this. This is the preview. Then I move to summary statistics and I will need to go to subtable percent. So just click this and add subtable and percentages and just move it here. Then I need to click custom summary statistics. I need to tick this out and then I need to look for mean and standard deviation. This one, this is the mean and this is the standard deviation. Of course, I can add any customized, say, value. But for measures of central tendencies and descriptive statistics, we have mean for central tendencies and standard deviation for um, measures of variation or dispersion. So here in the format, I need to choose uh, this one. The same for this one. And decimals, I just need two decimals. And that's it. So I apply to selection and close. Then I need to go to categories and total. I need to change the order from ascending to descending. And I go to show and click total. And here I can just include, for instance, descriptive statistics in brief or any uh, label that you want. And I click apply and then OK. So this is what will happen. We have the different Likert scale, uh, let's say, ranges or anchors, and then we have their frequencies and their percentages, respectively. And also here we have the mean and standard deviation. And here we have this label that we added, which is descriptive statistics. So this is in brief how you can analyze Likert scale using frequencies and percentages in addition to a mean and standard deviation. As far as the interpretation is concerned, we look at the frequencies and percentages. They are very straightforward to interpret. You just see how many people agree, how many people disagree, how many people are undecided, and their percentages. Whereas for the mean and standard deviation, since this Likert scale is coded from one to five, let's see the coding again. So strongly disagree is coded one and strongly agree is coded five. This means that the higher the mean score is, the more the respondents agree with the statements. Okay, so here if we found, for example, 3.06, this means that most respondents are undecided. Since three refers to undecided and neutral position. That's why the coding is very important and very meaningful. So the higher the mean score, the more agreement there is. And standard deviation just explains uh, in general how uh, people differ from each other in terms of agreement or disagreement. So it's interpreted as plus minus 1.64. So if we just see plus uh, to 3.26, this means that people would uh, agree. And if we just put minus, 1.64 this means that people would disagree so standard deviation is always interpreted in relation to the mean uh, score this is in brief how we can analyze Likert scale questionnaires 
using uh, frequencies, percentages, means, and standard deviation in addition to how we can interpret the results in relation to the coding that we did at the beginning. If you have questions or remarks, do not hesitate to post it below. And see you soon. Bye for now.